championship event at St. Louis following Monday's race at Charlotte Motor Speedway. NASCAR ruled that Chase intentionally crashed Denny Hamlin on lap 186 of Monday's Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte, turning left into Hamlin's right rear quarter panel and sending the 11 head on into the outside safer barrier on the front straightaway. Here is reaction from both race car drivers in car. Coming inside here, inside, you're going to be three wide mid. 11's right with you. Just a nine, still outside here. Still there, chasing you down. Still down there. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, trouble, front straightaway. Hard in the wall goes Hamlin. I need to park it. Ran over us twice in the last four laps. He just hung a, hung a left and right rear. Ooh, that was big. They were bouncing off each other. I couldn't slow down. Ah, you're good, man. They were trying to wreck. They were wrecking each other. That's as intentional as it gets. Got no break. Just bring it to us if we can fix this piece. And now Fox Sports did speak with both drivers once they were out of the race. Take a listen. It's a tantrum, and he shouldn't be racing next week. Right rear hooks are absolutely unacceptable. I don't care. It's the same thing Bubba Wallace did with, with Kyle Larson. The exact same. He shouldn't be racing. The, you know, the 11 ran us up in the fence there, and you know, once you tear the right sides off these things, it's kind of over. So just, uh, I hate it. I thought our Napa Chevy was was getting better. Denny said there was some retaliation there. Was there any retaliation on your part? No, uh, well, you know, what, like I say, once you hit the wall on these things, you can't drive them anymore. So unfortunately, not. Nah, no, just uh, an unfortunate circumstance. And now we do welcome in Elton Sawyer, NASCAR Senior Vice President of Competition, into the show. Great to have you with us here on this Newsy Tuesday, of course. So can you tell me kind of what decision process you guys had that led you uh, to suspending Chase Elliott? Yes, Caitlin. So if you back up to the, the race last night on lap 185 and the incident with the 11 and the 9, uh, we started last night gathering all the data. Uh, in-car camera footage, uh, radio communication uh, that led into this morning with a deeper dive, um, continued to look at in-car camera footage, uh, all available resources, and, and we landed on the fact that this was a, you know, an act that uh, definitely, in our view and with the resources and the data we collected, was, a, was an act that was intentional. Um, and as we have proven in the past, to be consistent um, you know, hooking someone in the right rear and turning them um, head on into the fence is not, just not something that we can tolerate and we won't going forward. Uh, again, we've been consistent with this uh, and our messaging has been consistent as well. Do you think the precedent was kind of sent last season when we saw a similar incident and outcome there between Bubba Wallace and Kyle Larson in Vegas? Well, if you take that, obviously that was, uh, you know, kind of set the precedent there. But if you if you look at it, we take each individual situation and and, and dissect that and, and look at all the resources that, that we have, whether that be SMT data, whether that be uh, TV footage, whether that be in-car cameras. So each individual case is different, obviously, uh, and we look at them separately. Um, but at the end of the day, having an act like that, uh, it puts not only... Uh, Denny's car, but other competitors uh, in harm's way, and we just can't allow that. I know you mentioned it briefly, but what kind of message do you feel like this is sending overall to the entire NASCAR garage following this incident? Well, again, after we reviewed all the data um, and we looked at it, we feel like this was the only decision that we could make. Uh, we have to let our drivers, our competitors, whether it's in the Cup Series, uh, the NASCAR Infinity, Infinity Series, or even the Craftsman Truck Series, that this is not a, you know, an act on the racetrack. Um, I've been there personally many years ago. I understand that you can be having a bad day. Um, things are not going well. You're going to have a bad finish, um, and you have these type of altercations. But retaliating in that manner is just not going to be acceptable, and that needs to be across the board and, and let our competitors know that. Well, thank you, Elton. We certainly appreciate your time, and uh, we look forward to seeing you out at the racetrack soon. Thank you. All right, Caitlin. Thank you. Have a great day. 
And Hendrick Motorsports released this statement. We understand NASCAR's need to maintain consistency in its officiating. The penalty will not be appealed, and we will submit a formal request for a playoff waiver. Corey LaJoy, 31, will drive the number nine Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 this weekend at St. Louis. And we are grateful to Corey for stepping in to the team at Spire Motorsports for making him available. So, as promised, here is...